Hello and welcome to day one of the 12 days of Vlogmas. My name is Mel and welcome to the channel if you're new here and welcome back if you are a returning viewer. I am a crafter and knitter living on the Orkney Islands off the north coast of Scotland. And I'm doing things Vlogmasy a little bit different this year. I'm usually pretty bad at um, sticking with Vlogmas. It's usually quite a busy time and um, just, just general busyness and it can get quite overwhelming, especially when recording every day. In fact, one Vlogmas, I only managed one day. <laughs> that was it. But this year I'm doing things a bit differently. So instead of doing 24 days on the run up to Christmas, I'm doing 12 days on the run up to Christmas and they won't necessarily be one day straight after one another. So I can take two days off in between or say, like today is the 4th of December that I'm recording. I'm a little bit late and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, but for example, I might record tomorrow and the day after, but then take three days off. I'm just gonna see how we go. Some days I'll be doing things, some days we'll be uh, sitting, lounging in front of the TV and knitting watching Christmas movies, I'm sh pretty sure that will happen at least one day. So this year I have no yarn advent calendars to open, but I do have a advent calendar, a 12 days advent calendar. That's a little bit different. And I bought a advent calendar for my husband um, as our kind of part of our Christmas presents really, because we don't really need or want anything this year so I got us kind of a fun advents each for kind of like our Christmas present well my Christmas present to myself and Christmas present for my husband if that makes sense so where to begin knitty things or get the advents out of the way um well first of all the reason I am recording day one on the 4th of December is because I got stranded off island for two weeks. Well, I'd originally planned to have a week off the island um, visiting mum, but I was also waiting for a delivery halfway through that week, which couldn't be delivered to the island. So we ordered a IKEA order. Um, we have been living here for 14 years now, having owned the house for 16, and we are still not finished rooms. And I just got so tired of having nothing to store our clothes in in the bedroom and it'd been absolute chaos originally we were going to build like plywood wardrobes fitted wardrobes and it's just we haven't gotten around to it we planned about it last year and it still hasn't happened so we just bit the bullet and ordered some flat pack sliding door large wardrobes for the bedroom set of drawers as well and a bookcase for the lounge so the delivery was supposed to come on the Wednesday. I had arrived at Mum's on the Monday and I was supposed to come home on the Saturday, but it didn't show up. And there'd been, a, not a mix up, but there'd been a delay with mine and several of the orders to the Glasgow depot. So I had to wait another week, which means I was stranded on the other side of the water for another week waiting for my delivery. But it did arrive on week number two and uh, I came home on Saturday night and yesterday was spelt, spelt, spent building furniture and most of this morning, because it is after lunch now, was also spent building wardrobe carcasses. So I'm a bit exhausted now. But that did mean I had a lot of knitting time over the water. Fortunately I had enough yarn with me as well, but it was close. So. Whilst I was away, I ended up doing a lot of sock knitting and I will show you all my socks. I have sparkly socks. It's like, what do I do first? Let's get the advents out of the way and then we'll talk all yarny things. So I decided no yarn advent calendar because I don't need any more yarn. I have a lot of yarn and I'm on a yarn diet. But I do, I don't really want for anything or need for anything, but I do have one kind of guilty pleasure. I don't feel any guilt about it, but you would kind of class it as a guilty pleasure. And that is, I really like painting my nails. Pretty colours. Pretty colours that I'm not going to focus on. But I like painting 
my nails pretty colours. At the moment, I have an icy blue on them because that was what was in day number one of my nail polish advent calendar. I know, it sounds really silly, but to me, it makes sense because nail polishes, to me, last years. So, and it wasn't expensive. I got a Barry M nail polish um, advent, which is completely uncraft related, but everybody has their things so I got this in day number one so I'm just going to open one of these every day I'm going to record one of my vlogmases because it is a 12 days of Christmas advent so that works out really nice and I got this in my doll number one it's a limited edition and I think the colors is blue frosting it's pretty I think it needs a second coat but I'm gonna have to wait later for that so that was it's a bit of a random one, I know. But for my husband, I got this idea from Yenna from Finnish Knitting Stories last Vlogmas. And it is a Bon Maman jammy advent calendar. Because my husband has toast for breakfast every single morning at half past five before he goes to work. So it makes sense. It's in this massive box and the sides open out like this and it has all these little doors and there's jams and teas in it so i will show you what he's got so far if i can dig them out because they're quite firmly held in place so let's see where is day number one because he's closed them all back up again uh there it is so day number one he got a little jar of jam if I can get it out of the box and it's apricot and banana and you get these lovely little jams if you can see the scale of them and they're perfect for his breakfast and there should still be enough left over for me to try them as well because obviously I want to try them too apricot and banana sounds quite nice day number two was a tea and he had it earlier and I didn't think I would like it because it has lemon balm and lemon lemon verbena and things like that like that in it but it was actually fairly mild um, because I'm not a fan of lemon balm I like lemon verbena but lemon balm just got that kind of sweetness to it which I don't like I don't like a sweet so I'm trying to get the next one out a sweet herbal tea um, because I don't drink tea, sugar in my tea, in my normal tea anyway. So day number three, yesterday, he got Mirabelle Plum and Spice. Spiced Mirabelle Plum. I have to translate these because they're in French on the little pots. And um, it does have on the back of the sleeve for the advent calendar, the translations and what's in them. Um, I can translate some of them, but some of them there's no chance today as I couldn't I had to look on the sleeve so let's find the last one that he got today and then we're all caught up because once I've finished recording I can't find door number four once I've finished recording I will place this in the kitchen in its place that, that it will live over Christmas period it has been in my craft room for the moment um, because the house is in chaos with having all these boxes everywhere so it is and i cannot remember it is oh yeah strawberry and guava so i i couldn't translate that i can i can i know a little bit of french but th it is truly a little bit of french um and i couldn't translate that but it is strawberry and guava i, I can't i don't know how what guava is in french I suppose I could have done the strawberry bit, but definitely not the, the, the guava the heart. So he's really happy with it. I think it's a really fun idea. Especially, it's like, often people get the herbal tea ones for Christmas, like the David's teas and the blue, no, it's not blue, uh, bird and blend. Bluebird. It used to be bluebird, and now it's bird and blend. Or vice versa I can't remember herbal teas but to be honest I am quite picky about my herbal teas I don't like green teas particularly I like matcha but not green tea and I don't like peppermint tea and I don't like lemon balm and I don't like herbal teas that have licorice in them so I'm quite picky so and mostly I just like black teas with flavorings like chai and things like that 
Um, so getting a herbal tea wasn't really a good idea for me. Today's herb, uh, yes, no, the, the herbal tea on the second was quiet moment herbal tea. And it had lemongrass, lemon balm, yarrow, cranberry, German chamomile and Roman chamomile. And I was pleasantly surprised when I had a little sip of it. I could have drank that, um, even though I had lemon balm in it. So that is briefly, a couple of minutes briefly, on the advents. I won't be getting the big advent calendar out every day, but I will show what we've both got. So whilst I was away, I didn't take my Christmas cardigan. If you've been watching the channel, you know I have been knitting a Christmas cardigan and I would have wanted it finished for the beginning of December. And I had planned on coming home on the 25th of December, November. I thought, oh, a week, a week's plenty time to finish the cardigan. I've done all the color work, it's just a bit on the bottom and the sleeves to go. In fact, I can show you, I've done all of the color work, past the color work and this is where I left it. I just knit maybe three rows on the bottom last night while I was watching YouTube. I thought a week, a week's plenty of time. It's iron weight, get those sleeves done, not a problem. I'll do that when I come home and then it'll be ready for the beginning of December. But I didn't take this with me and consequently being away for the extra week means it's not done, it's not ready. So this will be the focus of my knitting over the next few days. I need to pick up the stitches. Um, again, once I finish recording, I will pick up the stitches for sleeve number one because there is a little bit of colour work left to do because it has, it's like a mirrored image and I've only done up to the bottom of the white section for the sleeves. So I still have the colour work part, the red, the white on red for the beginning of the sleeve and then I can get those finished and hopefully it won't take me too long. I, but I, I estimated about a week for when I came back. So I'm hoping a week so it'll be done for Christmas. But I did get plenty of sock knitting done. Before I left, I had knit myself a pair of these West Yorkshire Spinners Vintage Tinsel glittery socks they have stellina in them vintage tinsel colorway with the blueberry bonbon contrast toes heels cuts i had forgotten i hadn't woven in the ends so i have ends to weave in this afternoon also but i didn't take those with me because i'd finished them what i did take with me was the rest of the yarn to knit my husband a pair which i did i didn't knit that that I took for size to make sure I knit them the right size. But I knit him the exact same pair, just my regular vanilla sock recipe, and which I'll talk about next time in the podcast when I show these. And I did a little pop of colour on the top of each cuff, which does not want to focus, but I did the red on one sock and on the other I did the, the purple. And I almost used every scrap of this yarn up. I have the leftovers in my project bag that I took and it is next to nothing. It is, it is a little bit of a scrap piece of yarn. But I really like them. Mum really liked them. So I think she's angling for a pair of these herself. So I'm gonna have to get another ball of these. They won't get finished for this Christmas. Look how much they sparkle in this light. Ooh, Stellina doesn't often, doesn't always show up on camera, but it's really sparkling. So they won't get done for Christmas for her this year. But I did use some of my leftovers to darn her walking welly socks. So she's got a little bit of sparkle there. And then I took spare yarn for, because I knew I was going to be away for several days. And I knew I would get through more than those socks but I got through knitting those in two days so then I started another pair of socks I took some some self patterning yarn make things simple for myself I did some contrast toes decided against using that yarn for the heels and I knit I did knit the whole pairs of socks the, the whole socks on both that doesn't make sense I finished the pair of socks anyway I have both of them here and 
then it got to probably the Friday and I'm like oh what do I knit on next I had took yarn with me for using my speed weave um it might be here too I have a little weaving darning machine and had some socks that needed repairing so I had taken two pairs of socks that I would wear whilst I was there after I'd mended them and I then had the balls of yarn that I used for mending them with me so that was good so I decided to cast on another pair of socks I had taken this yarn with me to mend one of those pairs and I started knitting the socks and this is a merino it is cascade heritage and when I do merino socks I do slip stitches on the ball of the foot here and the pair of socks that I'd had to mend I'd actually had to mend before I got to the heel turn so I did slip stitches for about an inch before the heel as well to reinforce there and I got past the heel and I thought I think I'm going to run out of yarn I don't think I'm going to have enough to complete the pair so I put one sock on hold and I have yet to wear the other ball of yarn this is a lot of talking about these socks but bear with me so then I thought oh what am I going to knit next those ones took a little that one took a little bit longer with the slip stitches but and I was bored I don't enjoy doing that it, I find it really frustrating it slows me down I think it's one of the reasons I don't like purling or cabling it's slower that slower than knitting stockinette so then I thought oh well I'll use the other half of this yarn I'll knit another pair of socks usually I get two pairs of socks out of a ball of yarn provided you do contrast toes and heels so I did that I started another pair I did the green contrast and I did the green contrast on the heels and I got so far and I thought I'm going to run out of yarn again so what I did was these socks that I had knit the cuff in the same yarn as I didn't use contrast for I pulled the cuff out and knit this part of the leg on these socks and then I had enough of the green contrast to do the cuff so I do have a full pair of these and I should have had two pairs but I need to knit the cuffs in probably just a white because there's quite a lot of white in the socks that will just do a undyed yarn for these so that was my knitting saga whilst I was away I had just enough yarn in fact I could have started the second sock on the last day of these but I was just worn out and tired and sock knitting out I think was the main thing I'd done so much sock knitting so these I am going to before I completely lose all daylight I will record a short segment for the next podcast episode so that I can actually put these in circulation these still have to be finished though because the Christmas socks want to be in circulation now rather than the next time I record because I don't know when that will be um, I'm sure I'll get another podcast out before Christmas but I would like to the socks to be getting worn through December so that is something else to do this afternoon it's going to be a bit a bit of a busy bitty afternoon to be honest so those are my socks right let me think I think that's everything for the moment what else have I got planned for vlogmas um well we've got these wardrobes to finish off for a start um we're kind of redecorating in the bedroom john's been painting we got some paint from the recycle center actually i wasn't originally going to use it for the bedroom i did have paint set aside and it this paint that we got from the recycle center was almost identical to the paint the unused paint that i was going to use for the walls anyway so that we'll put that on it's not covering very well he's done two coats He's going to try a third one and if the third one doesn't cover we're gonna to have to just use the original paint that I bought but I thought well I could save it for something else you know if we we already had this other paint there to use but it doesn't matter so I've got we've got the bedroom to finish off we've got these wardrobes to finish off and John's supposed to be making me a dressing table 
but I don't know if that will get done before Christmas. Either making me one or we'll find one at um, a second hand one and paint it and stuff. I did try to buy a dressing table but they wouldn't deliver to Orkney. Again, we have some real problems with not getting deliveries to the islands, the Scottish islands. Apparently we just um, are like overseas. In fact, I think you could probably get things shipped overseas easier than you can to Orkney. It's really, really weird. Um, half the time you can't get things shipped to the highlands of Scotland either. Even though we are actually still part of the UK. Um, for some reason, it's, it's just, oh, where is this wonderful place? It must be some mystical land we can't deliver to. But it's part of kind of living out in the sticks. You kind of get used to some of the disadvantages. But the advantages definitely outweigh those disadvantages. It has been very icy here. John's just gone out to work a bit early today. Um, the driver's like an ice rink. He nearly came a cropper going out to the car this morning. We've had a little bit of rain and all it's done is land on the ice and create more ice. It's just... A sheet of black ice the whole courtyard and the court the, the bend of the drive where the car is parked is just lethal i went out to feed the chickens this morning and when i went over the, to the barn i was like crouched down like a little goblin hunkering along and scurrying like chuntering along the floor in case i fell because if i fell then there was less distance to fall all crunched down like that than there would be if i was stood upright it makes sense I know because I have slipped twice on ice in our yard before a few years ago literally just like like comedy you know when they slip on a banana skin and yeah I've done that it's not fun so very icy we haven't had any snow like everybody else in the UK it's very disappointing <laughs> I I love snow I mean I I mean I, I wouldn't want to like drive anywhere in it obviously but I absolutely adore snow. When I grew up, we, I, we always we moved around a bit, but we always lived somewhere that had a lot of snow in the winter. We always had snow. Um, almost everywhere we lived in the north of England had snow. In fact, when we lived up like Weardale and places like that, we got a lot of snow. Um, but John, where he grew up in Derbyshire, Derbyshire gets a lot of snow, but he lives close to Derby City, or he did live close to Derby City, and they hardly get any snow. So for him, he doesn't really, it's not that he dislikes snow, he just doesn't particularly like snow. And he usually has to drive for work, he drives for work, so he's usually out in it. So he's not so fussed on snow. He likes it when you, you can, he's off work, but he doesn't get the great appeal. Whereas to me, there's just, I just absolutely adore it. I love it. If I could live somewhere, anywhere, I will only live somewhere with four seasons. We have two. Four seasons. And one of them has to be, it has to snow at Christmas. <laughs> Even if it's just for like a month, you know, that'd be good. Because I absolutely adore snow. I just want to trudge through it and just that, that kind of muffled silence you get when there's snow on the ground. And, oh, I don't know. I just absolutely, I just love snow. I love snow. Snow on on evergreen trees is even better there's just something it, it, it almost makes me cry i just think i think it's beautiful uh yeah i'm a, i think i'm a little strange so i'm going to go for the moment because we're past the 20 minute mark <laughs> and i've jabbered on for far too long and i shall speak to you again in the next episode they won't all be just chatty chatty like this but i've just caught caught got you caught up on what's been happening and I'll put some footage in of all Christmassy or just things we're doing today. See you next time.